Hi guys, Nana here and today I'm going to talk about the brand new mouse from Cooler Master, the MM711 that I have right here. Now as you can see this one uh, looks exactly like the mouse they released a few months ago, the MM710 and that is true with a few differences. So this one now has RGB, uh, it is a few grams heavier so this one weighs 60 grams while the previous one weighed 53 and this one will cost you a few euros or dollars more. Now the whole trend when it comes to gaming mice changed in the last couple of years. While a few years ago people actually preferred heavier mice and uh, even put more weights in them to make them even more heavy, nowadays people usually opt for lighter mice, especially if they're playing a lot of uh, FPS games and a lot of esports titles because these lighter mice are much easier to move around. Uh, so you can be much faster in games, uh, you can be more accurate in games and it's not going to tire out your hand and your wrist after hours and hours of gaming. So here I have the 7 tenths, the two of them, the white glossy version and the black matte version and these were actually from the very first batch when these mice came out a few months ago and even though they were great there were a few things that still had to be changed and uh, Cooler Master actually did exactly that. They changed the complete tooling that is used to produce these mice so if you opt for either a 710 or a 711 nowadays you will get the new and improved version. Now for 50 euros for the 710 or for 60 euros for the 711 you will get a mouse that is very light, it has a top sensor and it has great switches so it's a great bargain overall. And if you haven't seen any reviews so far about these mice or you know it already and you just want to know what's different Keep on watching, let's go! This video is brought to you by ASUS and their ROG SCAR 3 gaming laptop. The SCAR 3 comes with a 6-core Intel Core i7 CPU, a proper RTX 2070 graphics card and a stunning 240Hz IPS panel giving you that fantastic gaming experience. And then all that at a reasonable price. Check it out using the links in the description below. Both the MM710 and MM711 are available in four color options. You can get a matte white, glossy white, matte black or a glossy black version. Between matte and glossy, now both feel a bit different but I think it's just down to personal preference. I do think glossy ones will look better with damage and dirt over time but I kind of personally like the matte one more. Now both MM710 and the MM711 should be considered small to small medium sized mice. They are relatively short at just over 160 millimeters in length which makes them primarily for claw grip or fingertip grip gamers. Now if you have really small hands you can consider this one for a palm grip mouse too. It is not a super slim mouse either so if you have big hands and prefer a claw grip it shouldn't cramp your hand up. The sides are also a bit inclined so it's really easy to hold a grip while lifting the mouse without it slipping and that is even if you take the glossy version. The shape is also a safe recommendation and very easy to get used to. Now considering its low weight, this MM711 comes in at 60 grams while the 710 is about 53 grams, I think it's really impressive how well it is built as well as how balanced it is. The newer batches especially feel as sturdy as most other mice, actually better than many mice that don't have holes in them. Now I know many people would say lighter is better and thus the MM710 is better, but honestly I don't really feel or notice much of a difference between these two. Now if you are coming from a typical 100 gram or an 80 gram mouse, you will notice that the difference is quite big. So if you prefer the way the RGB version looks over the MM710s, just go for it. And talking about RGB, I really think they did a great job with the diffused RGB underneath. It lights up nicely and it looks really good. Now one issue with the original MM710 were some of the tolerances, especially on the buttons. And thankfully the quality of the newer batches is much, much better. Cooler Master already used solid Omron switches rated for 20 million clicks, so the original felt fine, but on the newer versions there is a lot less post travel on the buttons, making both left and the right click feel very snappy. They also fixed that the buttons could move a bit side to side, and I didn't really mind that on the first batch, but I know several buyers that did, and they will be happy to know that the newer version really feels like an upgrade. 
and that goes both for the MM711 as well as the new MM710 mice. Side buttons feel great as well, now they're not too big that they get in the way, but they're easy to reach for most grip styles. They can be used both by pressing them straight on or rolling your thumb up, whatever you prefer. Now they're only on the left side, so this is very much a right-handed mouse, even though it has a symmetrical shape. The DPI button is low enough to avoid accidental touches, and the scroll wheel is very much typical for a gaming mouse. It is not too heavy, it is not too light, and it is okay to press without accidental scrolls. Now two features that have become really popular and that I personally really like are the PTFE feet, which combined with a low weight really makes moving the mouse super smooth compared to typical mice. And I also love the paracord style cable. Now such a cable just doesn't get in the way of your movements and it's the closest thing to it feeling like a wireless mouse. I do still prefer wireless, but you cannot get a competitive wireless mouse at this price point. As for sensor performance, uh, it's pretty much become a pointless topic to talk about, except when a mouse has a really cheap sensor. But the Pixart PMW3389 in the MM710 and the MM711 is perfect. It is accurate, it handles crazy fast flicks, it has super low liftoff distance, and is basically everything you want for low sense FPS games. But a good sensor also makes a big difference in all around use. Just trust me and try Photoshop with a crappy sensor. Now one thing that is worth talking about is the software. At launch, the MM710 only had some fixed profiles, but Cooler Master did add software support later. Now, the software is easy enough and offers all the typical features like remapping buttons, changing the lighting profiles, changing the DPI settings, and adding macros. Now, it's not the nicest looking software package there is, and I wish I could scale it to be a bit smaller, but it does the job fine. They should also add some smoother RGB effects, uh, the only real effect is a color cycle and that just goes way too fast even on the slowest setting. But thankfully that shouldn't be hard to add. For example, they added the option to only enable a certain number of DPI settings after user feedback. So unlike before, you won't have to swap through 7 DPI settings if you do accidentally face mouse that DPI button in anger. So I guess that covers it for the new MM711 as well as the improved version of the 710 mouse. Now I love the original version as well, but these improvements make it even more impressive. So you get a mouse that looks and feels great, that is very light but has great build quality. The sensor and the switches are just spot on and they didn't cheap out on mice feet as well as the super fancy paracord cable. So I have to say that for 50 euros for the non-RGB version or 60 euros for the RGB one, you get a mouse that is pretty much great in every single way with maybe the software being the only thing that can use a bit of improvement. Now, whether you're gonna go for the non-RGB or the RGB version is completely up to you. It is completely down to personal preference, but I have to say that both of these mice should be considered one of the best gaming mice you can currently get. Now that's it for today, thank you so much for watching, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this review and about these mice, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one, bye!